Hello again, this is Dr. Kevin Connors. I just wanted to address some questions that we get frequently from patients or prospective patients on programming their rife and what the frequencies mean when we look at a person's program. So remember, when we're using rife technology, we're using frequencies. So I always say the quality of rife technology has to do with a few factors. One is the quality of the machine. Does it actually put out enough power that the frequencies are going to effectively um, make changes to your cells and help your body be able to overcome whatever disorder you're dealing with? So you have to have a powerful enough machine. Typically those handheld machines, the ones you can put in your pocket and stuff, they're not powerful enough to make any changes in your body or very little changes in your body. Secondly, my opinion is you have to use light frequencies, especially when you're dealing with cancer or something like that. You need light frequencies, so it has to have a Tesla tube bulb. Uh, we are using the True Rife. We use other Rifes as well, but uh, this is a picture of a True Rife uh, drawn by my daughter, a great artist. Um, so the question, how do I know what programs I'm running, what frequencies I'm running for my cancer? Let's clear up one uh, erroneous thought that people have. Many people think that they have that there's one frequency for a cancer. Like, oh, I got pancreatic cancer. What's the frequency I should be running? That is not true. There's there are hundreds, sometimes thousands of frequencies that are known to affect a specific cancer. So when we program a rife for somebody with pancreatic cancer, we're using all the known frequencies that can benefit somebody f with pancreatic cancer. And there's at least hundreds of them. So there isn't a specific frequency that's going to destroy a cancer. That is, uh, that is misinformation. Uh, and so clear that out of your head. We're trying to use frequencies to effectively get your immune system to a be attracted to that cancer to be able to get your immune system to do its work and kill the cancer. The rife is destroying things. The rife is stimulating your immune system to do what it can do. So you also need to stimulate your immune system with nutraceuticals, with diet, with a good attitude. All these things play a part. Um, the rife is not a miracle, one magic tube that's going to solve all your problems. But without the rife dealing with cancer, I think it makes it more, much more difficult. So using a rife for cancer patients is, can be miraculous, but um, you got to keep it in perspective. So when a person looks at their program that we created, so here's a screenshot of a program. You see this little box. This is in the true rife uh, program itself. You see this little box that has all this fuzz, pulse, dwell, duty, and then after duty, it says 45, and then underneath duty 45, it says these, these numbers. These are the frequencies that are being run. The other things, the fuzz, the pulse, have to do with the background frequency. And then the main treatment frequency or therapeutic frequency is under that duty. In this case, it's multiple frequencies, 595 hertz, 844 hertz, 848 hertz, and so on. There are multiple frequencies uh, under each of these duty cycles in everyone's programs. When we program somebody's rife, we're programming eight to nine hours overnight programs. You could run some of the other programs that are already in your rife machine that might be only 10 minutes or an hour long. And there are going to be probably less frequencies and much lower dwell, meaning how many seconds it's going to be on each one of the frequencies. So. We're not programming just one frequency. There's not just one frequency for a specific disorder. There's multiple known frequencies for the disorder. So if you're in your RIFE program and you play with this box right here, you will actually change the program. If you actually played with it, tweaked with it, put in a different number here and you hit save, then you would save the program and you could effectively cause the program not to run because it won't run certain frequencies under different duty cycles. And if you're having an issue with your life, that might be the problem. You accidentally hit something and saved it. So we might have to 
fix that for you. So clearing up some misunderstandings, there's not just one frequency for a cancer or even several frequencies for a cancer. There's hundreds of different frequencies for a cancer. And when we program a rife, we program other frequencies in to help the person's body's immune system and their detoxification pathways as well. So all these things are what we're looking for. Here's an example of just some of the frequencies for flukes. These are known frequencies that have helped people with the parasitic fluke. Uh, so just gives you an idea of numbers of frequencies that you're dealing with. Here's just one little sheet that I just <laughs> copied and pasted a screenshot of some frequencies that we use for pancreatic cancer. A lot of known frequencies there. Now understand, some of these frequencies for pancreatic cancer may be the exact same frequencies that we might use for colon cancer, or maybe a same frequency that you might use for a migraine. So there are frequencies that affect your cells in certain ways. So uh, you need to understand it's not one little specific frequency for one little disease. These are frequencies that can be crossed. So this frequency, let's say 19, 1920, 1920 might be a frequency that can be very beneficial in 27 different maladies. So it's not always specific to one thing, nor is there one or even several frequencies that are only specific to one malady. Hopefully that clears it up. And second part of that question, how do you create our program. So how we write programs for people is number one, we put in all the known frequencies for their diagnosis. So they're diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. There are a lot of known frequencies that can benefit people with pancreatic cancer. So all of those frequencies are going in that person's program, typically every night. So we program overnight programs because we want our patients to be running the rife at least at night while they're sleeping. That fits to our philosophy that we want people to live during the day and not to be tied down to a machine, even a good machine that's gonna help them during the day, if at all possible. We want them to be living and fulfilling their purposes during the day. At night, you have to sleep anyhow, so why don't we just get treated at night? So we write overnight programs. If the person is uh, less ambulatory and less out and about, then we can write day programs as well and foot bath programs and all those kind of things too. But at least the night programs are running every night. So A, we put in all the known frequencies that are known out there through experiments, through data for that specific malady. That's the first thing that we put in the person's nightly program. Then we add frequencies through our testing. And this is really key because we're dealing simply with frequencies. How do we know that, okay, this person was diagnosed with adenocarcinoma of the colon. How do we know that, um, you know, liver frequencies aren't going to help him or her even more so? So we test with the cheek swab testing. We do the testing to find out what other frequency sets we're going to add. This is where people end up getting two-week or three-week programs that they'll have an ABC program that they'll run um, on a nightly basis because a lot of other frequencies came in through the testing. So adding those frequencies through the testing is a key component in the success of what we do. And then lastly, we add problem-specific frequencies. So if the person might make a comment that hey, I'm, I've had problems with fungus my whole life. Could you add some fungal programs to, your, to my overnight pro, uh, program? Or I'm dealing with breast cancer, but I also have ulcerative colitis. Uh, and that is a real you know, life changer for me. Can you add those to my overnight program so I don't have to spend time during the day doing ulcerative colitis programs? So we do add pro, uh, problem-specific frequencies as well. And there's a fourth piece I didn't put on here, but we add other frequencies to support the body. So we'll add liver function, detoxification frequencies, kidney function frequencies, and DNA healing frequencies to that person's program. We do that on everybody's program because no matter what condition or diagnosis you're dealing with, you need to have proper 
liver and organ function and detoxification pathways in order to heal. So when you look at a program and you see all these numbers, these are your frequencies. If a person ever asks us, well, what does that frequency mean? We do not answer that question, no matter how much you probe us, because the frequency 609.37 doesn't necessarily relate to Lyme disease or pancreatic cancer. It can relate to 30 different maladies. And because you test on a frequency that might say Lyme disease does not mean you have Lyme disease or does not mean you have pancreatic cancer. It means that frequency will be beneficial to you. And it could give people wrong ideas because they tested positive for a frequency and then they think they have that disease. That is completely incorrect information. And I do know doctors that actually will test for frequencies and then tell a person they have a condition because a frequency tested positive for them. That's just, that's just improper diagnosis at the very least. It's malpractice, maybe. It's just wrong. It's not correct to say that to a person. It's misinformation. So frequency has to do with just how your body's responding to that frequency, that it's beneficial for your body. Uh, it benefits your body at that frequency. That's why we're using that. It's stimulating your immune system. It's waking up your cells. It's bringing back residents. It's bringing back healing. That's the way God made you. So hopefully this helps with understanding frequencies just a wee bit. And uh, we'll continue to make videos like this. Thanks.